a few days ago, Trump spoke before Congress, as is typical following an election. What was quite atypical, at least so far as Trump goes, was the general public response. It was positive. <laughs> Actually, quite overwhelmingly positive. Of the 47 million people who watched the speech, the initial polling on CNN of all places was 57% very positive and 21% positive. That's 78% overall positively valenced opinions, with 11% somewhat negative and 10% negative and 1% mixed. Despite all of the Trump hate, all of it, people were apparently pretty happy about this speech, and there's a lot to break down here. First, I'm not going to go over the speech itself for a number of reasons, the least of which is because it's over an hour long. Well, it would be significantly shorter if you removed all the clapping, but also because I don't think Trump said anything he hasn't said before, except maybe about the voice program, but also because I think it's up to you to make your own opinion about the speech itself. So instead, I'm going to talk about the major points of interest outside of the speech. The response of the media, for example. The response the Democrats, both during and following the speech, the response of the average citizens in the days following the speech, and what this whole thing means for Trump and the future of the US. So first, let's start with the media. Computing Forever made a video about this where he suggested that perhaps the media has finally wisened up about this doubling down on Trump and how maybe it's not a good idea and maybe it's driving their ratings into the mud. I'm prone to somewhat agree. After all, Van Jones said during the speech there was a moment where Trump became president. Because that thing you just saw him do, if he finds a way to do that over and over again, He's going to be there for eight years. Now, there is a lot that he said in that speech that was counterfactual, that was not right, that I oppose and will oppose. But he did something tonight that you cannot take away from him. He became president of the United States. Time and many other outlets also reported that he finally sounded like a president here. I mean, for fuck's sake, even Stephen Colbert praised this speech in his own way. Another thing about the speech, it was uncharacteristically optimistic last night, and a lot of people are praising his shift in tone. Yes, he shifted from unhinged narcissist <laughs> to hinged narcissist. I honestly can't tell if this is an apparent change of heart, and I mean, listen to some of the folks talk about him. Both uh, President Obama and President Bush on their first speeches uh, were a little bit higher in, in terms of the positive reaction, but it's all in the ballpark. I mean, that number there is a really good number for Donald Trump. We know going in, Donald Trump was at historical lows in approval rating and a very polarizing president. Uh, so I think his, these marks are right in the ballpark there and quite good for Donald Trump. Good numbers. He, you know, who knew he was capable? of sounding sane for a prolonged period of time. I can't tell if this is based on a financial incentive because they've realized that this doubling down isn't working, or rather just a temporary reaction to the extremely positive polls. For example, shortly after the speech, the hashtag New Trump began trending, with people saying very positive things about Trump, how they never thought he could be so presidential. However, now the hashtag is mostly full either of right-wing Trump supporters who've always been Trump supporters, or people using it to lambast Trump once again. Only a few days later. Even at the time, there was as much dislike for Trump as there was positivity in the hashtag. The Washington Post, for example, is taking a microscope to everything Trump said under the guise of fact-checking. Look, I don't have any issue with actual fact-checking what he says, but so often this claim fact-checking has been an excuse to make mountains out of molehills or straight-up lie. I mean, that's exactly what PolitiFact is all about, after all. By the way, don't get me wrong, I don't disagree with anything in this Washington Post article. I read the whole thing, I actually think it's pretty agreeable. I'm just saying to be wary of this temporary positivity that it may inevitably turn sour. So my point on the media is that I think it's too early to call a change in this Trump-hating trend. Call me a loser if I'm wrong, but I would be willing to bet that within a week or two, we will be right back to the obsessive focusing on Russian hacking and other complete and utter nonsense. Trevor Noah, the slimy, unfunny weasel, was on top of his game immediately accusing polling of being some sort of Russian ploy. So hardcore Democrats weren't feeling Trump's speech, uh, but a lot of other folks were with polls showing that people who watched it overwhelmingly thought that Trump did a good job. You know who must have been so proud? Putin. Calling out the mainstream media for not attacking Trump for once. You know how they say you're not supposed to shoot the messenger? Well, maybe also don't suck the messenger's d either. <laughs> Castigating Trump for reading off a teleprompter. Yeah, like Obama never did that. All Trump did was read a speech off a teleprompter. That's all he did. 
That's all he did. He read off the teleprompter without flying off the rails. And crying that in the past, some media outlets from a year ago said Trump was behaving more presidential. People in Groundhog Day don't know they're in Groundhog Day. That's why they keep doing the same thing. This is some of the weakest argumentation I have ever heard. And you know what, Trevor? No one cares about you and no one cares about your bullshit. At least no one with any brain cells still rolling about in there. Trump trolled you and you seem pissed about it. Christ, I hate this man. I, you know what? I think I hate Trevor Noah more than I hate Don Lemon and Brian Stelter combined. Also, yeah, I mean the more liberal, more extreme, less mainstream media sources condemned the speech anyway. But ultimately, there's no reasoning with ideologues. Now onto the Democrats' response. Let's start with their response during the speech because it was absolutely abysmal and may in fact be part of the reason why both the average person and the media apparently wanted to distance themselves from the DNC immediately following the speech, even if that's changed since then. As you may have heard, many of the Democratic Congress people refused to stand up or even clap during various portions of Trump's speech. They chose to sit when Trump denounced the desecration of Jewish cemeteries, and they laughed when Trump said it was time to move past trivial disputes. Moreover, they even booed. Of particular interest, and since I mentioned earlier, several of them specifically booed at Trump's announcement of his new voice program. What is voice? Well, it's an acronym that stands for Victims of Immigrant Crime Engagement. It's a new subdivision of the Department of Homeland Security designed to tackle violent crimes perpetuated against American citizens by illegal aliens. Did you not hear that, Democrats? Trump just made a group designed to help victims of violent crime. Isn't that supposed to be the kind of loving and caring thing the left is supposed to be all about? Apparently not. Not when the crimes are being committed against, let's say, a legal Hispanic woman in a predominantly illegal Hispanic ghetto. No, 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 no. We don't care about her. We only care about illegals because our job is to virtue signal and play good globalist goys to these illegal migrants in an attempt to get their invalid votes. Fuck the impoverished people who live in the areas with the highest crime from illegal aliens. Just fuck them. And speaking of the lefty media, check out this fucking horseshit article from something called Attention, I guess, written by <laughs> some individual accusing the division of being reminiscent of, wait for it, take a guess, what is it reminiscent of, folks? Did you guess Nazi Germany? Then you would be correct. Yes, it's reminiscent of the Nazis. Jesus, these people are really turning this Nazi shit into the new racist, aren't they? It's like, hey, Papa Pal Keith, what's worse than a racist? I don't know, Papa Pal Debbie. A bonk on, I mean, a Nazi. You mental invalids are destroying the meaning of this term when you can't stop making these Nazi allegations. It's absolutely absurd. Anyway, back to point, and speaking of Keith Ellison and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a woman who I am astounded is even able to show her face around other members of the Democrat Party, considering how she royally screwed over Bernie. Both of them remained seated during a two minute long applause for the widow of Ryan Owens, a man who died in the line of duty as a member of the United States Armed Forces. Look, I'm a very nationalistic person. This made me personally tear up a little when I saw this, but I understand that many people are not nationalistic and that's totally fine, obviously. However, this woman lost her husband. And regardless if you think Trump was just using her as a political chess piece, she was clearly in tears. Could you not have shown her a modicum of respect and reverence for the death of a man who laid down his life for his country? Holy shit, just saying this, writing this, it's, it makes me upset, it's absolutely unforgivable. I don't care if you're a nationalist. If you're a representative of your constituents who are citizens of the United States of America, you do not show this egregious level of disrespect. Fuck, as an American citizen, I mean, fuck, as a human being, you do not show this level of disrespect towards a grieving widow. You could be the most America-hating person on the planet. What kind of monster looks down at their phones and a crowd of hundreds who are offering their condolences? It makes me almost physically ill. And by the way, burnouts, Bernie also didn't stand up and clap for most of this. He, he did it first, but then he sat. We'll get to Bernie though. On a lighter note, I do want to point out something a bit amusing from this Democrat refusal to show Trump even a minimal level of civility and respect. There was one guy among the Democrats who kept standing up and clapping. Who was it, you ask? Why, it was West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. Hmm. 
I wonder why that might be. Anyway, it appears that Joe was also one of the very few Dems to not immediately dash for the exit after the speech. I think he might actually be likely to flip parties, or he's gonna get kicked. Because, as I've illustrated, I don't think it's hard to see why. <laughs> I remember watching an election night and seeing West Virginia get called for Trump with less than 1% of the districts reporting. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. All right, that's enough of that. Okay, so let's get the Dems response. And oh my, was it delicious. Even the lefties thought this was an embarrassment. So let's take a look at it. I'm a proud Democrat, but first and foremost, I'm a proud Republican, and Democrat, and mostly American. You, you what, mate? <laughs> I know everyone, including myself, has made this spicy little meme, but oh my god, does this not look like a Heaven's Gate video, or what? For those who don't know, Heaven's Gate was a suicide cult. Let, just watch this. Uh, planet Earth, about to be recycled. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. Now, by the way, I actually don't disagree with a lot of the things this guy said. For example, I'm very much against most of Trump's picks for his cabinet. Honestly, I like a lot of what this guy said. Now, maybe the reason I didn't hate this video, or what this old coot said, is the exact reason the left despised it. First of all, they were pissed off that it was a white guy in a room of almost all white people, with the exception of one black dude. Just like the media, it seems that the DNC was starting to get a little terrified at the fact that people were having this positive attitude towards Trump, despite all of their attempts to discredit and destroy him through frivolous and baseless claims. As such, they put up this Heaven's Gate looking motherfucker in a southern diner in a sad and desperate attempt to appeal to what they think the average Trump voter appreciates while essentially abandoning their shrieking millennial base who would have wanted a fat, disabled black woman screeching about how racist Trump is. And that's why, as you can see, the video is not well liked. And trust me, I don't think it's conservatives just liking this video. I'm pretty sure it's mostly leftists. And this really just shows you how far down the rabbit hole they've gone. This guy says nothing that's disagreeable. And even though he does criticize Trump, as a Trump supporter, he said nothing that I found really offensive or, or that I objected to. And yet, you see how despised the video is. And that's just because they didn't have some fat disabled black woman talking. That's it. The, the, the identity politics has reached such a fever pitch that this is the universe we live in now. Finally, as a short aside, I want to talk about Bernie's response. I listened to his whole thing, and let me tell you what it is. It's initially just Bernie complaining that Trump didn't talk about every single issue that he ever raised over the course of his campaign during this hour-long speech. That's a little ridiculous, don't you think, Bernie? Now, he does have some good points. He points out, for example, some hypocrisy in Trump's environmental statements versus his actions. Donald Trump said tonight that we need to promote clean air and clean water. And to be very honest with you, because I was only a few feet away uh, from the president, I had a difficult time not laughing out loud when he said that. Because on this very, very day, he signed an executive order rolling back President Obama's clean water rules and has appointed the most anti-environmental EPA administrator in our nation's history. Which for me, I'm personally sort of against because until China has literally any standards, it is absurd for us to be held to extreme stringency in manufacturing and industry. President Trump said tonight that he wants to substantially increase funding for the Pentagon. What he didn't say tonight is that he will come up with that $84 billion in increased funding for the Pentagon by slashing programs that benefit the working people of this country, that benefit the elderly, that benefit the children, the sick, and the poor. 
So Trump said he wants to increase defense spending. Look, I don't want any more defense spending. I don't want any more military spending. I want lower taxation. And while I don't agree with Bernie on where the money should go, in my opinion, it should just stay in the hands, pockets, and wallets of the citizens rather than go to a bunch of social programs. But if that money has to go anywhere through the federal government, I would rather it go to social programs than military spending. We spend enough on the military as is. According to the Government Accountability Office, one out of five, one out of five large profitable corporations pays nothing, zero in federal income tax. Today, we are losing $100 billion in revenue every year because corporations are stashing their cash in the Cayman Islands and other offshore tax havens. Here he's totally right about these major corporations. I don't like this shit either. Tonight, President Trump once again made it clear that he plans on working with Republicans in Congress who want to repeal the Affordable Care Act, throw 20 million Americans off of health insurance, privatize Medicare, make massive cuts in Medicaid, raise the cost of prescription drugs for seniors, eliminate funding for Planned Parenthood. Now, Bernie, the Affordable Care Act is a nightmare. Insurance premiums have skyrocketed, and the idea that people must have insurance or be fined? That's ridiculous! He also fails to understand Trump's very basic statements on the Affordable Care Act, which is repeal and replace. Now just get rid of it, replace it. Anyway, that was most of Bernie's bit. Let me explain my opinion on Bernie here though for a second because I know I've been a bit of an asshole toward him in the past. I liked Bernie. I liked him for one reason and one reason alone, and that's because he spoke his mind, he was honest. I also liked that he cited statistics, I guess. Even if I didn't agree with him politically, I liked that he seemed genuine. And that's why I personally was so disgusted when he allowed Hillary to cuck him out of the nomination and just sat aside and gave it to her. Alas, moving on. So, in the days following the speech, the reaction has been about what I expected. Despite the initial positive reaction, many people immediately went back to hating Trump or perhaps just continuing to hate Trump. I'm not surprised by that. I mean, there was this Hillary staffer who tweeted, Sorry, Owen's wife, but you're not helping yourself or your husband's memory by standing there and clapping like an idiot. Trump just used you. Who has subsequently deleted his Twitter account. Fucking asshole. This is absolutely repugnant. I'm so glad he deleted it because that doesn't deserve to be on the internet. But as for the average person, at least on Twitter, the new Trump hashtag has more or less evaporated, with people mostly now using it either to continue to trash talk him, or again, as I said in the opening, it's just some other conservative Trump supporters using it as they would typically use it. Of course, as always, it is absolutely your right to shit talk Trump all you want. I would fight for your right to say whatever the fuck you want to the death. But for all the hopefulness that many of us felt on the night of the address, yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. Not surprising, but certainly disappointing. What I want to end on is what this means for Trump, and that's this. This speech sounded pretty much line for line like every other speech he has ever made at many of his rallies. Was it more subdued? Yes. Was it more presidential? Whatever that means. Yes, absolutely it was. It was much more calm, it was much less funny, but it sounded like everything he's ever said before. To me, the fact that apparently so many people were so pleased with this speech only indicates that none of them had ever heard him talk before. And that makes sense. We've seen this time and time again, that people who hate and despise Trump, the people who hate him the most, they are the people who know next to nothing about him. And they are incapable of often coming up with even a single reason why they despise him so. You protesting Donald Trump? Yes! What's the policy that you object to? All of it. Just like the things he says about women and like the race. Like what? <laughs> Too many things. Yeah. He does not um does not support other races. He's got too much money. He has to be respectful for uh, to everyone because we don't want that kind of people uh, leader for our nation. I think that he is entirely un-American in the way that he goes about his politics. He's very homophobic and he's racist and he just he's he's just fear mongering. 
As for the speech itself, well, it's an hour long. Well, probably closer to 30, 45 minutes if you cut out all the applause. But it's just too much for me to cover, and moreover, I don't want to tell you how to feel about the speech. That's something I think we all need to do for ourselves. While I enjoyed it a great deal and found it to be one of Trump's better speeches, as I've said, he didn't really say or do anything quite divergent from his typical rally speeches. Again, he was more presidential, but he was still Trump. Be that something you find good or bad, ultimately, you have to make that decision for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Aiden Paladin, Altana Volt.